Bonjour, comment ça va? Euh, bienvenue à notre session de Français Louisianais. Welcome to another session of Louisiana French. Uh, this is our Louisiana French uh, classes um, for beginners. Um, the, these little videos we are presenting to help you um, learn to speak and understand the French, the variety of French which is spoken in Louisiana, particularly South Louisiana. Uh, I'm Kirby Jambon, and I'm glad to be with you here today again. Um, we've discussed many different ideas so far. For those of you who are just joining us, we've already done six, six different videos with different lessons. Um, you can see them all here on the, my YouTube uh, channel. Also, if you're interested, um, you can have a paper documents, some paper documents. I'm putting them in a uh, Facebook uh, Messenger chat group called Louisiana French Lessons. Um, if you're a Facebook friend of mine, simply um, let me know that you want uh, to receive or to be a part of the chat group so you can have access to the documents. And um, if you're not a Facebook friend of mine, simply um, look for me on Facebook and send me a Facebook message and I, can, um, I will add you to the chat group and there you'll be able to get the documents. Sorry if I'm repeating things again for those of you who've been here for a while, but I want to make sure everybody's up to date with this. Thanks again for all the, uh, all the uh, support and all the people who have uh, given us uh, such a um, you know, great deal of inspiration to continue during this time of, a, of uh, I guess, you know, isolation a little bit. <laughs> so, but we're going to enjoy ourselves a little bit and we're going to learn at the same time and we're going to come out of this all better. Today we're going to talk about questions, how, uh, some question words, how to form questions in Louisiana French. Um, and again, in our variety of French, there are some ways which are exactly the same as you would find internationally in other varieties of French, and there are some that are a little different, and that we're going to talk about as well. Uh, many of you who might have, uh, even if you have, even if you've studied some kind of French, or even if you've just heard in general French, you've probably heard the phrase like, for example, parlez-vous français, parlez-vous français. Parlez-vous is actually what's called an inversion because it's actually um, speak you French is what it's saying. It's the way you say instead of saying do you speak French, it says um, speak you French. Actually, you put the verb first. That inversion form that's found internationally is pretty much n never really found in Louisiana French. We don't use that form pretty much at all, if ever. Um, we understand parlez-vous français because it's, you know, it's what well said, but we don't usually, we, have, we, we would say vous parlez français, but never uh, parlez-vous français. Basically, if you, if you listen to what I just said, what we would do is we would say things, um, you would say like a basic statement uh, with the rising intonation. So, so if you have a question that elicits a yes or no response, you simply say it as a statement, but say, say the statement, but say with the rising intonation, okay? Um, for example, just to, the one example I just gave, you know, um, um, you know, vous parlez français. I'm just telling you that. Vous parlez français? I'm asking you. And that's the basic difference, you know. Um, so, for example, I could say, um, Tu connais Tom? Tu connais Tom là? Try that. Tu connais Tom? Right. That means, do you know this man or do you know that man? Mm -hmm. Tu connais Tom? Yeah. Now, another thing you can add to a question, um, which will signal that it's a, a, a question word. We don't always add it, but we add it sometimes. Uh, sometimes it flows a little better in a sentence, and sometimes we add it. Is this really interesting French word called esque, which is found internationally as well, esque. A lot of times in Louisiana French, the esque is just reduced to ske, you know? Like, ce que tu connais Tom? You can just say, tu connais Tom? Do you know this man? Ce que tu connais Tom? Okay, all right. Uh, you know, all right. Tu parles français? Okay, ce que tu parles français? You can add that little sku to it. Now, sku is a combination of three words, and I can't really give you an exact you know, like, translation of that, but basically it signals there's a question. There's a, there's a question. And uh, you're gonna hear it sometimes, and some other times you won't hear it. But if you do hear it, it almost always, um, pretty much without exception, in, in the case there's a question somewhere, it's being added. Okay. So let's talk about the first question word we wanna talk about is the word for where. Now. The sound you're going to hear for where is OU, and internationally it's pretty much all you would hear for where is OU. But typically in Louisiana French, typically in Louisiana French, and oh, by the way, those of you who are following along, I'm actually on this page here, it's page 8, page 8, page 8. Um, it's, um, um, in Louisiana French, you normally will hear a sound before the OU, and you're going to hear one of three things normally. You're going to hear AYU, 
IU, AU, AU, or AU, AU. Sometimes you have that Y sound with it, you can hear this. So three different ways that you're gonna hear it. Um, you may also just hear U, but not very often. And sometimes following all of those, you might hear SK. You might, AYUSK, EUSK, EUSK, USK. All of those ones you would hear SK. So for example, if you would say, uh, if I said, um, AYU TU VA, try that. AYU TU VA, that means, where are you going? It can also mean, where do you go? But it's, where do you go or where are you going? AYU TU VA. Try this one. EUSKIRES. EUSKIRES. That means, where does he live? Euskires, the verb reste meaning to live. Okay, and try this one. Eu te paron. Eu te paron. Where are your parents? Where are your parents? Okay. All right. So you heard sometimes you might discuss, sometimes you didn't again in that. One. Now the next thing we're going to talk about is the word quoi, and quoi is the word for what. Uh, typically, uh, those of you who might say some French, you know, when you ask something what in, in international French, you're either going to do the more formal way of qu'est-ce, uh, or you're gonna do um, a more um, casual way, which is c'est quoi, all right? Uh, typically, you might hear qu'est-ce or c'est quoi, but those are very more rarely found in Louisiana French. The two verb, the two um, question words you're gonna find more often is the word quoi, which is found in about two thirds of the state, and about one third of the state you're gonna hear the word qui. Yes, we're going to get to a key with another meaning, a little while key, which can also mean who. We'll talk about that in a minute. But in, so you're either going to hear the word quoi or qui to begin the sentence. Um, internationally, you would only say c'est quoi, but in Louisiana French, quoi c'est is absolutely correct. And also qui c'est, both meaning what is or what are sometimes. Okay. Now, so for example, uh, we're going to do quoi tu veux. Quoi tu veux. Now, we did that verb before. If you remember, verb meaning is the, is the form of the verb to want. Quoi tu veux is you. So, quoi tu veux is what do you want? Quoi tu veux. Now, as then, you're going to say that in about two-thirds of the region in the state. Um, like in the region where I live presently, and this is the way we say it here. However, the region where I'm originally from, um, we say qui tu veux. Qui tu veux. All right. And qui, again, can, qui, we're going to talk about in a minute, means who as well. But qui in those regions means what. Um, some of those regions include um, in around the, in around the, in the Fouche Parish, um, Terrebonne Parish, Avoyos Parish, uh, along the Bayou Teche, um, and like in St. Landry and St. Martin Parish, uh, certain parts of Evangeline Parish, for example, uh, Ville Platte. Is a, these are regions where you're going to hear qui used um, um, more often than quoi to mean uh, what, all right? Let's try this one. Quoi c'est ça? Quoi c'est ça? Mm -hmm. Quoi c'est ça is, uh, what, huh? what's that? Quoi c'est ça? Mm -hmm. Quoi ce qu'il dit? Quoi ce qu'il dit? And again, you heard I put the ske in there again. Sometimes you can have the ske, sometimes not. Quoi ce qu'il dit is, what does he say? Uh, or what is he saying? It can mean both depending on how you use it. Mm -hmm. And then another one, qui ce qu'il fait là-bas? Qui ce qu'il fait là-bas? Which can mean, what does he do over there? You know, qu'est-ce qu'il fait là-bas? What's he doing way over there? All right. All right. You know, you know, if, you know, if you had someone, like, for example, I'm wearing a California shirt today. I don't know if you can, it's kind of old, but it's got a California shirt on there. Let's imagine you had someone, you know, someone who you knew who lived in California. And you say, yeah, je connais quelqu'un dans la Californie. You know what? Yeah, yeah. Qui ça? Nah. C'est mon frère. I know someone in, in California. It's my brother. Right, right. And you might say, Qu'est-ce qu'il fait là-bas? What does he do over there? Qu'est-ce qu'il fait là-bas dans la Californie? What's he doing over there? Oh, he va être movie star, lui. Tu connais? He va être dans Hollywood. You know? so, probably you got what that was. That little say. <laughs> All right. I, my brother's not really in California, but you know, maybe one day. I don't know. All right. So <laughs> we'll continue. Um, now, speaking of the word key, we're going to talk to that word key. Now, we just said key in about one third of the regions in the state means what. But key everywhere can also mean who. And pretty much it is the word we use for who uh, without it. And you're going to hear that key sk. And you're also going to mean key ski because key is actually a very useful word. Uh, it's used a lot in French for different purposes. Uh, in certain, as I said, it always means, it will mean who no matter where you are in the state. 
Uh, it can mean what in about one third the regions of the state. It's also used in clauses like to mean that. For example, if I say la semaine qui vient, that means the week that's coming next week. Okay. Uh, um, uh, la personne qui, qui me parle, the, the person who's speaking to me, who means like the who in that sense, who's speaking to me. Um, okay. Uh, so it can mean that. So it's used in clauses that way. So qui, but qui is used to mean who. And you can use it, for example, qui c'est ça? Qui c'est ça? Who's that? Okay. Yeah. Um, and again, it could, qui c'est ça could be what's that in those regions. Or something like, for example, in my region, we would say qui c'est ça? We put a little cœur in there, qui c'est ça? Um, that's found over in the La Fouche region. Um, all right. Qui t'a donné ça? Qui t'a donné ça? Who gave you that? Qui t'a donné ça? Right. And this next one, something you'll find uh, usually uh, when we go out to eat. Well, we're not doing that now, but when we start going out to eat again, usually by, at the end of the meal, you might hear this one. Qu'est-ce qui va payer? Qu'est-ce qui va payer? Yes, that means who's going to pay, right? <laughs> who's going to pay? So, so that's one there. Our next uh, question word is the word comment. All right. Comment we heard before in the different greetings. Comment ça va and comment les affaires. And you should know by now it does mean how, right? You can sometimes have the comment ce que. All right. For example, comment ce que t'as fait ça? Comment ce que t'as fait ça? Which would mean how did you do that or how did you make that? That fait is the verb faire, which could mean to do or to make. Huh? Comment ta grand-mère? Comment ta grand-mère? How's your grandmother? She doing okay? I hope so. Take care of her, okay? All right, and then here's one that's, um, and of course the um, the como is pretty much the same as internationally. The key is the same as internationally, except for 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 when it means who. However, we, and again, the one that's what is rather unique to Louisiana. The ones we just did, the I U A U, that's kind of very Louisianian. Um, avec with why, uh, there are two one, two ways that we say why, and one of them is found internationally. You found it everywhere in the world. And it's also found in Louisiana. It's totally understood in Louisiana, no matter where you go. And you can simply say that one if you like. And that's the word pourquoi. Pourquoi. Or pourquoi ce que. You know, the little esque attached to it. However, there is one in Louisiana that we use in Louisiana that's found that it's said a lot in Louisiana. And um, you're going to hear it a lot. So if you're talking to Louisiana French, if you're speaking to Louisianians, you, you'll hear this term a lot. It looks like quoi faire, which would literally be what to do. And, and if we pronounced it that way, that's probably what it would mean. But, but we typically pronounce it kofar or kofar, kofar or kofar. And kofar or kofar is another way to say why. All right. So you can say, pourquoi est-ce que vous autres a fait ça? Pourquoi est-ce que vous autres a fait ça? Why did y'all do that? Or you can say, kofar vous autres a fait ça? Kofar vous autres a fait ça? Which is also, why did y'all do that? And again, kofar is kind of a unique Louisiana term that you're going to hear and use in that way. Uh, you'll hear in Louisiana. You won't hear it much outside of Louisiana used that way. But um, but if you don't, but you can use pourquoi as well. It's understood everywhere as you go. Okay. All right. The next word is the words for how many or how much. The words for how many and how much is actually one word. We don't need how and many. We, uh, it's one word, and it's uh, combien, combien. And it's got a B in it, C-O-M-B-I-E-N, but sometimes the B is not pronounced in certain regions, so you might have combien, combien. And so, and, and if it's followed by a noun, you're going to need to add the word de before it, okay? So, for example, combien de fois t'as appelé? Combien de fois t'as appelé? All right. And you say quickly, combien de fois t'as appelé? And that little, that, that means how many times did you call? How many times did you call? You know, um, all right. Combien d'argent ce que t'as payé pour ça? Combien d'argent ce que t'as payé pour ça? You know what that means? No. Well, I remember when I bought my first car, it was a little old Chevy Nova, and I brought that home, and my old grandpa, who, you know, saw that car, he saw how small it was, and he asked me that question. He said, Combien d'argent ce que t'as payé pour ça? And when I told him, he went, Cool! He asked me, How much did you pay for that car? How much did you pay for that? <laughs> How much money did you pay for that? And when I told him how much a small car like that cost, and, and you know, he said, oh, them prices these days are sassy kept All right. Okay, so uh, we're going um, to do one more little uh, question word today before we take a little break. And, um, and that's the word um, ekel. I'm sorry, ekon. We'll do ekon and ekel, because I mentioned both of them. Ekon and ekel. Ekon is the word we use for when, okay? Uh, you might just hear con, which is more internationally, but we typically add a con, and you can add the sque, 
So you can say a cos uh, a cos qu'il est parti. You know when when is when when is uh, you know um, when did he leave? You know a cos qu'il a cos que t'es arrivé. When did you get in? When did you arrive? Uh, cos que t'as passé. When did you come by? When did you go by? When did you visit? Mm -hmm. The word quel, which is the word for which, or the word for what when it's in front of a noun, like what time, you would say comme quelle heure il est, what time is it. Um, quelle qualité de crème tu veux? Quelle qualité de crème tu veux? Now, sometimes we would also very often drop that L sound when it's in front of a consonant. You might just hear, que qualité, que, que qualité de crème tu veux? Que qualité de crème? And uh, which would mean what kind of, it looks like what kind of cream do you want, but la crème in Louisiana French is the word for ice cream. Um, you might have learned that ice cream is, uh, uh, some people have called it crème à la glace or crème de glace or crème glacé, which you have those two words, crème and glace, crème meaning cream, glace meaning ice. What's interesting is that these days in, uh, in France, for example, um, la glace means ice cream. And for us, la crème means ice cream. Um, if you want to put cream in your milk, you probably would say something like crème de lait, milk cream. Um, and uh, we use the term la glace only for ice. Well, in, in France, there you could, if you order la glace, you might not be getting ice. You'll probably be getting ice cream because, but here you'll have to order la crème. And we use the term qualité. It's an, uh, qualité is another word for sort, which would mean a, a, a kind of something, a type of something. Quels arbres on va couper? You know, what trees are we going to cut? And then ekel, ekel, ekel. Ekel is a word we use to mean um, which one, which one of these. And um, internationally, typically, you would have to distinguish between um, masculine or feminine. You would say like laquelle or lequel, and we just use ekel, so it's, a, it does, it's not gender specific. So, t'as vu mon chien? Hmm? T'as vu mon chien? Ekel. So if I had more than one dog, you would ask me, t'as vu mon chien? Ekel. Speaking of that, <clears throat> t'as vu mon chien? Ça c'est Ali. Okay, ça c'est Ali. So, moi et Ali, on va, on va vous dire au revoir pour aujourd'hui. Et uh, demain, on va se parler beaucoup. Dis bye-bye, Ali. Bye. -bye, Ollie. bye. <laughs>